This video is all about setting up a reverb on an auxiliary track and how to bus specific instruments to that reverb. And when we're using reverb in our DAW, we always want to make sure that we put it on the auxiliary track, not directly on the channel. And the reason for that is because it keeps our mix very clean, uh, keeps us organized. It also makes it easy to choose how much reverb we want on individual instruments, and even better, if you wanted to all of a sudden change that reverb from, let's just say, a cathedral to a um, plate reverb. It's really easy to do that for your entire track, so um, we always want to put it on a bus. So let's make that auxiliary track first. And we can rename it reverb because I always like to relabel everything so we stay nice and organized. And I have a really simple drum pattern that I've made and as you can see here are our MIDI tracks where I programmed it and the instrument track was in battery. And I've exported all of those as audio now so you can hear it back. And this is pretty dry, as they say. It doesn't have any reverb on it, and we want to give it a little bit more of an ambiance to work with. So before we do anything else, I want to relabel our buses. Um, so when we are busing to the reverb, everything's very organized, especially if we want to bus to other places, if we're going to use the side chain, if we're going to bus to a delay, for example. We want to make sure that everything is labeled really well so we don't get confused and it doesn't become overwhelming. So if you hit Shift-U, that will bring up your bundles window. And under the bus tab here, buses, you can see your buses are located. Um, and we only have two here. We can add as many as we want. Um, but I'm just going to take bus three and four, double click it, and relabel it reverb. And then close. Now, since we've labeled that bus, we want the input of our reverb auxiliary, our auxiliary track to be our reverb bus. So anything that's being sent on that reverb bus is going to be going straight into that auxiliary track where we will put a reverb on a plugin. Now let's choose what we want to send to that reverb. I usually would send the snare and the hi-hat. Um, I don't send the kick to the reverb because what that does is it can add a whole lot of muddiness to your mix that you don't need. Same thing with bass. I wouldn't send a bass to a reverb. So in our sends area here, um, with our snare audio track, we'll start with that first. And again, send that reverb, as we labeled it, to the reverb bus, which is being sent into our reverb channel. And remember when we're sending on our sends, it's sending a duplicate signal to what we're hearing out here. Which is very important when we put our reverb plugin on. I'm going to use Rverb to start, which is a Waves plugin, but you can do this with any other um, reverb plugin that you like. And since we're sending a duplicate signal, we really only want to hear the effect on that signal as opposed to hearing that signal coming through again. So we wouldn't want our snare coming through our um, snare audio track as well as our reverb auxiliary track because that would have less control over the volume and we want to just make sure um, we're only hearing what we want to hear. So with that in mind, when we have a reverb on an auxiliary, we always want to make sure that our wet, dry, or our mix is at 100%. And what that means is we're only hearing the effect of what we send to the auxiliary none of the original sound. And as you can see, since we set this up, um, our wet dry is at 100% here, and even without affecting any part of this reverb, you can hear it. And we can choose how much of that reverb we send, again, And if we wanted to add that to the hi-hat as well, we can do the same thing. And let's just say we want to get out of this hall reverb and we wanted to choose a different setting. Well, that's up here in our presets in the top left. And we can choose this very easily. And since we put it on an auxiliary track, it's going to change the reverb for everything we've sent to that reverb channel, which is really helpful if we just want to change the room of where we are, 
um, or just change the type of reverb altogether. Let's just go to a large room. Go to a larger room. And that's some very simple reverb busing that you can do in DP and also in other DAWs.